So this is how I approach an unplanned multi-block print using the Blackthorn image. In this case, I sketch the image directly onto the lino. First are the tools needed to start. File gouges, very fine V and U shaped blades with bulb shaped handles which fit into your palm. A board which hooks onto the table edge to keep things steady. And to one side I have the A big tools which are great for beginners and I started with those and the acrylic paint. I use a sharpie to mark the lino as it stays put and then an acrylic wash so that the carved areas stand out. For some reason I always use a red wash which turns the lino pink and has now become a habit. I have to use a magnifying glass with detailed work which is the white plastic thing in the foreground. It is attached to the table, makes life a whole lot easier. My eyesight is deteriorating with age. The first thing I do is carve out the outline using the finest V-shaped gouge. And when the outline is in place, I use the smallest U-shaped gouge to start working into the design. One of the first things you learn is to always carve with the blade moving away from you and your fingers. When I started lino cut carving, I always had Elastoplast on my fingertips. Always. In fact, one company that sells these types of tools includes a couple of Elastoplasts. The story behind this print starts with a stroll along the path beside the Dinas Railway. The Blackthorn was in full bloom and so I took a couple of snaps using my mobile. A home, I took a small square of lino and sketched a, a section straight onto the lino using Sharpie. But as I was busy with other prints at the time, I put it into the fair box. Now the fair box is the box which I take to craft fairs. And that also has process examples of the prints on sale. So, as the people move around, if they show an interest in my lino cut prints, I show them the battle grey lino that I use and I explained the process to them. And I used this particular square of battle grey lino with the blackthorn drawn on it. Have done for months. So at one craft fair, there were two ladies and I handed them the lino so they could feel it. It was a nice warm day, so it was all supple and bendy. Then one of the ladies commented on the image on the lino and asked why I hadn't carved it. And I realised that I had been so used to using it as a sample that I had forgotten that there was an image on it. So fast forward to a couple of months ago and I had reached a very tricky stage of South Stack, which is a print in progress. So I decided to have a break and carve something straightforward. And there is nothing more straightforward than carving around lines that are already there. And as it is small, I thought I would record the process and here we are. So although I only discovered lino cut printing recently, many of the people I meet in craft fairs have had some experience of it in school. I didn't, but having thought about it, I realised that I had been raised with Japanese woodcut prints on the walls as a child. And when I went to Japan as an adult, I bought a print, which is now framed and above the fireplace. It is of koi carp and it is gold and red and glorious. Then when I went to Paris for my 40th, we went to the Klingoncourt flea market and I bought myself a Japanese woodcut print there as well. So woodcut print, print marking is the forerunner to lino cut. The principle is the same, but lino is obviously much softer and easier to handle. So it was all around me, all the time. Carving lino is slow work. And so all these clips that you've been watching have been speeded up. Otherwise, you would be sitting here watching for hours. Even a small, simple piece like this, which is just following the lines, takes time. I tend to focus on the design first and then move out. I love the carving process. It calms me and I am totally focused on the image, the blade and nice, clean lines. And here we are. The print is all carved and there is no surface pink left to be seen.
Using a bit of left grey, leftover grey ink, I test the lino to see if the image is clean enough. It is, but the blackthorn looks a bit lost on its own. So I had a bit of a think and had the idea of moonlight shining on the branch. So I tested it out using wet on wet watercolour. The ink is oil based, so I can soak the paper with water, doesn't affect the image, and then just drop the watercolour on the paper. So now I've decided that I'm going to have a background, I need to create a second block to provide that background. Now to do that, I need to transfer the image to a second lino. And of course, the original image itself has gone because it's been carved up. And so the only image I have is the carved one. So the way you do it, or the way I do it, is to ink up the first block using Payne's grey ink. Then I transfer the image to the second block using newsprint paper. And that's what you can see me doing now. And the newsprint paper is paper that is used by newspaper companies to make newspapers. And it is also used by chip shops to wrap up the chips. And so of course it is dead cheap. Cheap as chips. And so I use this paper for all sorts of things. Stuff like this, um, also for um, tidying surfaces up, taking excess ink off, all that sort of thing. Now, if I put the image straight onto the lino, it would be the wrong way round. But by doing it this way, you transfer the image onto the lino second hand, so to speak. So it's been transferred onto the paper and then goes off the paper onto the lino. And so it is the right way round. Now the thing I'm using here, which has just seen the images, is a baron or baron, um, spelt B-A-R-E-N. And that just transfers the image from one surface to the other. It's plastic with um, bamboo leaf wrapped around it. Um, that was a sneak peek just to see whether it's done. And then just finish off the transfer of the ink onto the lino. And there we are. So the lino is now all ready to be carved out for the background. This is the printing equipment that I use. So I have a registration board, um, lino and hardboard, favourite oil-based inks, thin paper to print on, chip paper to remove excess ink, rollers to apply the ink, and these are also known as brayers. So with the registration board, I line up the background liner block, the second liner block, and ink it up. The ink has been thinned with reducing medium, also known as extender, and I have used three colours, Payne's Grey, Thallow Blue and Rose Pink. The paper is a very thin Chinese paper, which is great for proofing because you can see what happens. At this stage, I am using um, the purple around the outside, which has been made mixing thallow blue and rose pink, greatly thinned with a reducing medium. And then the second roller has just thallow blue on it, again, greatly thinned. This is the lightest of the colour transfers that I've done. This is the final one where I have reduced the inks more and more and more. Um, reducing ink is very effective and it does it acts a bit like water does on um, watercolours. Again I like my linos to be clean so I wipe off any ink that might be on any edges or any blade marks so I don't have any chatter. So this is the thin Chinese paper and you'll be able to see that as I rub the baron over it to transfer the ink from the block onto the paper you can see it you can see the marks and this is the great thing for using this for proofing because when you start using heavy duty paper you're working blind you can't see what you're doing all you can do is feel it and it sort of embosses the surface 
but with very, very, very thin paper like this, which is still cloth based, so it's robust. You can rub it, as you can see, I'm scrubbing away with the bearing. Um, the ink comes through. It also dries very quickly, even though it is oil based ink. Did a sneak peek again, noticed I'd missed a bit, and so rub that on, and there is the image. What I have to do next is the blackthorn itself. So line that up in the registration board so it should be in exactly the right place. Cross fingers. Using Payne's Grey as the colour, I find black too hard when you're using um, light colours. I am using an, uh, again, cleaning up the surface and then what I will do is use an earlier printed background, one that has a heavier colour density because that one will have had more chance of drying. So make sure it's all lined up. Put the Chinese paper on top with the background already on it. In fact, I've found that with this Chinese paper, it doesn't really matter whether you put the, the foundation image on first or the background. Um, it doesn't seem to matter at all. The paint grey will still stand out. And this is the moment of relief. As you're actually rubbing the paper with the baron and the ink comes through and you can see that it is where it is meant to be. I find this lining up of blocks the most stressful element of printing. But when it works, it feels fabulous. And a hey presto, here we have it. Okay, so here are the two blocks, background, foreground, and one of the proofs. And here are the inks that I've been using. And as you can see, over on the right is the phthalo blue with the pink, and then a gradient mix, and then the blue all thinned with the reducing medium.